Okay, so chapter six is called probability distributions, but it mostly looks at the binomial distribution. But 6a is um, actually about different types of probability, dis probability distributions. So I think it's worth to go through some of these that we have here. It says here that there are a few ways to show the mapping from outcomes to probabilities. So I'm going to use this example of a random variable with the capital letter X to represent the number of heads when three coins are tossed. So the underlying sample space is actually saying all of the different possible things that could happen here. So when you're tossing three coins, you could get HHH, HHT, HTT, etc. You get all of these different combinations that there are. And there are actually eight different combinations here. And that's because there are three different things and each one has an option of two different bits. So it's two cubed for those number of options that there are. But don't worry too much about that. So this is what is going on in the background. And then we're gonna have a look at different ways that you could represent these probability distributions. So one of the ways you could represent these probability distributions, and this is one of the most common ways, is to represent the distribution as a table. So you can either have that you flip three coins and none of them say heads on the coin, because remember, X is how many times it lands on heads. Well, you can see that this one eighth that we've got here of it happening zero times is because there is only one instance where it uh, where there is only zero heads. If we then have a look at where it says the number of heads is one, well, that looks like there is one, two, uh, is there another one? One, two, three times where there would be one head, which is why it says three eighths for the probability. And then for two eighths, sorry, for two heads, not two eighths, you can see that we can have two heads here, here and here, which is why the probability is three eighths. And then for the last one, the three heads that we have, uh, sorry, three heads will be for a probability of one eighth. So that's taking this probability distribution that we have here, sorry, the sample space that we have here, and it's writing the probability distribution as a table. The other way that you could write this table is as a function instead. So it's saying here the probability that the random variable, which is the number of heads being tossed, is equal to x, which is going to be various numbers. It tells you what they can possibly be. Now, it's a little bit unclear from this, but these are separate. bits. That's an eighth and that's three eighths and zero. They're all separate to each other. So it tells you here that the probability that the number of heads being tossed is x, well, zero or three. If you're saying that there are going to be zero or three heads, the probability is one eighth. There is a probability of zero heads and three heads. They both have a probability of one eighth. If x is one or two, in other words, if there are one or two heads, then the probability will be three eighths. And then they write the word otherwise, which goes with the probability zero. So really, it's just a way of expressing this table, but it's writing it in function notation. And they explore this a little bit more in exercise 6a, um, but it's nothing too difficult. The last way that you could represent this um, distribution, instead of as a table or a function, you can represent the probability distribution graphically instead. So in this case, the probabilities lie along the side here, and along the bottom, you have the particular outcomes. So these are the x variables, and it's saying, what is the probability that you get well, we're talking about a dice here. What is the probability that when you roll a two on the dice? Well, the probability is a sixth. And what's the probability of rolling a four? Well, the probability is a sixth. And what you should notice here is the probabilities are all the same. They are all a sixth. And this is a really special type of um, probability distribution. The throw of a die is an example of what we call a discrete uniform distribution because the probability of each outcome is the same. So that's why it's uniform, because uniform means the same. And it's discrete because you can't roll a dice and get 1.1 or roll a dice and get 3.5. There are only set values that you can actually get when rolling a dice. So this is a good to help you with exercise 6a, but this isn't a massively common part of statistics, but it's still worth having a go at some of those questions. This idea of a discrete uniform distribution often pops up as a one mark question.
The bulk of this chapter, however, is going to be about a very special type of distribution, which is the binomial distribution. And the binomial distribution is going to be linked to the binomial coefficients that you would have studied in pure maths. So these bits are really important here. In order to use uh, the binomial distribution, you need to have certain criteria. So it says that you can model a random variable x with a binomial distribution. And there's some language here that we're going to break down. The b here means that it's binomial. And then afterwards, you write some brackets where you say n, bracket, uh, n comma p. Well, the n is referring to the fact that there is a fixed number of trials. Whatever this thing is that we're talking about, that we're modeling, there is going to be a fixed number of times or trials that it is being done for. The P is going to stand for the probability of success, but I'm just going to say about this bullet point that we've got here, that there are two possible outcomes. It is either a success or failure for that particular outcome that you're measuring. It's not possible for it to be one, uh, it's not possible for it to be like in between, it either has to be like a yes or no. The third bit, which is that there is a fixed probability of success, that probability is not going to be conditional on other probabilities. And this will make sense when we look at some of the examples as well. And the fourth one is that the trials are independent of each other, that the, the trials are not going to interact with each other. Um, so this is the representation of how you say a binomial distribution. And let's just read some of these bits along the side. It says, in the example below, the success is going to be left-handed. So that will make sense when we have a look at this. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is this little squiggly sign here. It says, has the distribution. So looking at this, it says, if x has the distribution of a binomial with n trials and fixed probability p, then... The probability that x is equal to a particular number is equal to the binomial coefficient for that particular number multiplied by the probability to that power multiplied by 1 minus the probability to the power of n minus r. Now this all sounds pretty complicated, but we can think about this with the coin example that we had on the previous page. Apart from I'm going to think about it with a biased coin. Remember that x was the probability of it being on heads, or sorry, was the random um, the random variable of it landing on heads. Now, because it's a biased coin, I'm going to say that the probability of heads, I'm going to say it's a higher probability. I'm going to say it's 0 0.6. So we might say that x is binomially distributed. And let's say we're going to throw the coin, I think we might throw this coin I don't know, three times is what we said in the previous one, didn't we? Yep, we're going to throw, throw it three times. So it would be binomially distributed with a trial of three, and we would say the probability of it landing on heads is 0 0.6. So if we wanted to find out the probability that the number of heads it landed on was one out of those three, we would say we would do uh, n choose one, multiplied by the probability of it landing on heads once, multiplied by the probability of it landing on not heads twice. And you can see how this will link up with this formula that we've got over here. So let's try and put this into an example and actually see how it might behave. So it says on a table of eight family members, six people are left-handed. Suggest a suitable model for the random variable x, the number of left-handed people in a group of eight, where the probability of being left-handed is 0.1. So it seems like a suitable model could be the binomial, because there are a fixed number of trials, which is the eight family members. There are two possible outcomes of success in failure. Well, the two possible outcomes are going to be, because the, the um, x is going to be the number of left-handed people, it's a success if they are either left-handed and it would be a failure if they are right-handed. Yes, I guess we could say that some people could be ambidextrous, which means they could write with the left hand and the right hand. So maybe this isn't the best way to do this, uh, this distribution, but generally we would say there are just two possible outcomes. Um, it says here that there are a fixed probability of success of being left-handed. And yeah, that seems to be true. We've said that the probability of being left-handed is 0 0.1. 
And then the last part, it says the trials are independent of each other. Well, I'm not sure about that because this is a family, but we may be addressing that in part C of the question where it says that the model may not have been appropriate. OK, so let's say what the distribution would be. The number of left handed people, I think, could be distributed binomial, binomially with eight people in the group and a probability of them being left handed of 0.1. What it wants us to do for part B of the question is to find the probability that the number of left handed people in the group is equal to six. So I'm going to try and explain how this formula works. Well, the first thing, the n choose r bit, the n is eight and the choose r part is six. Then we're going to have the probability to the power of r. So we're going to have 0 0.1 to the power of six people and then it says one minus the probability which is going to be 0 0.9 to the power of the other two people so let's just think about what's actually happening here we are trying to find out the probability of there being six left-handed people which means i could have left-handed 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 and then i might have the other two people as right-handed so the left-handed people all have a probability of being left-handed of 0 0.1 and the right-handed people have a probability of being right-handed of 0 0.9. So this explains the part of the formula of the 0 0.1 to the power of 6 times by 0 0.9 squared. But what it doesn't explain is this bit, the 8 choose 6. Well, this probability that we've calculated here is just for having these people sat or those family members in that particular order. We could have had R, L, R, L, 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 L. We still could have had a different order where we have the two right handed people and we still have six left handed people. And this bit at the beginning, the 8 choose 6, it is going to determine how many different ways you can arrange those two right-handed people amongst all of those left-handed people, which will increase the probability of there being six people at that table. So that 8 choose 6, I'm going to see if I can do it on this calculator, it is going to be 8 choose 6 it is 28 so there are 28 different ways of having six left-handed people and two right-handed people which is meaning that the probability is going to increase because we are not asking for the first six people to be left-handed we are just interested in any of the eight people sorry in any six of the eight people being left-handed and there are 28 ways of organizing these um, l's and r's to be able to do that so the probability is going to be 28 multiplied by 0 0.1 to the power of 6 multiplied by 0 0.9 squared. So let's just get that into the calculator. That's 28 multiplied by 0 0.1 to the power of 6 multiplied by 0 0.9 squared. And we get a very, very small number. The probability of there being six people sat around a table is 0 0.000268 also known as 2.268 times 10 to the power of minus 5. My shortcut for knowing it's the power of minus 5 is I've just got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros there, and it just works. You get 2.268 times 10 to the power of minus 5. In other words, the chance of 6 out of 8 people being left-handed is very unlikely. Which leads us on to part C of the question. It says, suggest why the chosen model may not have been appropriate. Well, we said here that the trials needed to be independent of each other. And it's possible that being left-handed may be something that is genetic. So although it's an incredibly rare chance to have six out of eight random people, as left-handed, it may not be so rare to have six out of eight family members being left-handed because it's likely that there is some kind of connection, which would mean that the people are not independent of each other. So the chosen model may not have been appropriate um, because it is likely 
that left-handedness is genetic. And so the family members are not independent. And remember, independence is one of the things that makes a binomial distribution valid to be able to use, okay? So let's have a go at trying to do some of these ones we've got here. You can have a go at these, um, and then you can try exercise 6b, but I'm gonna go through these now. So it says here that x is binomially distributed. There are six things that are happening, and the chance of that x thing happening is 0 0.2. What is the chance of x being equal to two? Well, the probability that x is equal to 2 is going to be 6 choose 2 multiplied by, well, we want two of these to be a success. So we want 0 0.2 squared multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8, and it's going to be to the power of 4. These powers here are always going to need to add up to how many times the trial is being done, because we're saying I want two successes and four failures. And I'm going to multiply it by 6, choose 2, to think of all of the different orders that those things could happen in. So I'm going to do 6, choose 2, multiplied by 0 0.2 squared, multiplied by 0 0.8 to the power of 4. And we get 0 0.2, whoops, 0.24576. So uh, unlikely, but still about 25% chance of that thing happening. The next one says, what's the probability that there are more than five successes? Well, the probability that there are more than five successes would be that there are either five successes or six successes. So the probability of there being five successes would be 6 choose 5 multiplied by 0 0.2 to the power of 5 multiplied by 0 0.8 plus 6 choose 6, and we're going to investigate this in just a second, uh, multiplied by 0 0.2 to the power of 6. I want all of them to be a success, so there's not much point in doing the next bit because it would be 0 0.8 to the power of 0, which is just 1. So we're going to talk about that second part in just a second. So let's work out 6 choose 5. Well, really what we're saying here is how many different ways are there of putting five things, uh, of choosing five things out of 6? And there's going to be six different ways of doing that. So 6 choose 5 is 6 times that by 0 0.2 to the power of 5. And then we're going to times that by 0 0.8. And so that first bit is 0 0.001536. Well, I'm hoping here that for this part, you should have been able to work out that 6 choose 6, there's only one way of that being picked, of there being 6 of these successes. So it's just going to be 0 0.2 to the power of 6. So we're going to do 0 0.2 to the power of 6. And we get here that it is 0 0.000064. So adding those together, I'm going to add 0 0.001536, and we get the answer 0 0.0016, okay? Let's have a look at the second question here. I have a bag of two red and eight white balls. X represents the number of red balls I choose after five selections with replacement. How is X distributed? Well, it's going to be a binomial distribution. It's going to be a binomial distribution because the, uh, the there's a success criteria of it's either a red ball or a white ball. It's either definitely red or not red. There are a fixed number of trials here because we're doing this five times. The probability is going to be constant because there's always going to be two out of the 10 balls because they're always being replaced. And the fourth reason, which I'm going to have to look back here, is because I think we've said all of them, fixed number of trials, it's either going to be red or not red, and there's a fixed probability and the trials are independent of each other, they won't be related. So x is going to be binomially distributed with five choices and the probability of it being red is going to be 0 0.2. I want to then find out the probability that the number of reds I pick is equal to three. So I know that there are five um, not five, yet five choices, um, there are three of them I'm wanting to be red, 
I'm going to multiply that by the probability of red cubed multiplied by the probability of white squared. Really, this is representing red, 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 white, white. And this beginning bit of the five choose three is coming up with all of the different ways that you could order them. So you could do this order. You could do this order. If you came up with all of the different ways you could order them, the number of ways you could order them would be 10 different ways of putting red, 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 white, white in an order. So it's five choose three multiplied by 0 0.2 cubed multiplied by 0 0.8 squared. And so the probability is 0 0.0512 for that bit there. So you should be able to have a go now at doing some of exercise 6b. I hope that goes well.